In this video, we're going to take a look at one-tailed hypothesis test. So performing a hypothesis test for the binomial distribution is relatively straightforward and actually quite formulaic. And I think the best way to demonstrate this is to take a look at a practice question. Now we've got this question here. So we're given the probability that Tom is late to work. That's 0.08. Then we're told that Tom's manager decides to take a sample of 40 days. And from the sample, Tom is late to work on five mornings. Then we're given this claim here, so Tom's manager believes that the probability of Tom being late to work is greater than 0.08. And all we want to do then is test the manager's claim at the 10% significance level. So the first thing that we should do here for this hypothesis test is define a random variable. Let's choose x here as our random variable. So x here will represent the number of days in which Tom is late. Okay, so x in that case would follow a binomial distribution. So this follows a binomial distribution here. So then we have the parameters of n and p. So n here would be 40. And then p in this case, well, you might think that it's 0.08. But what we're going to do here is just leave that as p for now. Okay, so we leave that as p. And you'll see why in a moment. So because we're performing a hypothesis test here, it makes sense to define our hypotheses. So we need H0 and H1. So for H0 then and H1, what we're testing for here for a binomial distribution is this parameter P. We need P here for both H0 and H1. Now, what we're actually considering here for these tests, so H0 and H1, or our hypotheses, I should say, H0 and H1, well, we're testing the manager's claim here. So the manager believes that the probability of Tom being late to work is greater than 0.08. So for H0, we test that P is equal to this value here, 0.08. And then for H1, we're testing this claim here that P is greater than 0.08. Okay. So P is greater than 0.08. So now what we're going to do here is assume that H0 is true. Okay, so in other words, we're going to take that P is equal to 0.08. So we assume that H0 is true. We assume H0 is true. So if H0 is true here, what we're saying then is that X follows a binomial distribution with parameters of 40 and 0.08. So let's just write that down. So x follows a binomial distribution with parameters of 40 and 0.08. So what we need to consider now is the evidence here that Tom's manager found. So we had this sample of 40 days and from the sample, Tom is late to work on five mornings. Now what we're going to do here is find a binomial probability, but we need to decide whether it's going to be x greater than or equal to or x less than or equal to. Now for a one-tailed test, it's really easy to kind of deduce this. So all we do is we consider H1. So for H1 here, P is greater than 0.08. So in that case, then this would be the probability that X is greater than or equal to because this is greater than here. So this is the probability that X is greater than or equal. And what we consider here then is the evidence. So this was five. So this is what we found here from the sample. So X being greater than or equal to five. So obviously this was less than here for H1. This would be X being less than or equal to five. Okay, so that just changes de depending on H1 here. So nice and straightforward there for deducing this probability here. So this would be equal then to one minus. So it's gonna be one minus here, the probability that X is less than or equal to four. Like so. So now we just need to find this probability here. So using our calculator to find this probability then, so it's distribution, binomial, and BCD because this probability here is cumulative. So the data is a variable. X would be 4, so X is this value here. The number of trials is N, so that's 40, and P is 0.08. So press enter then. So what I get here is 1 minus, so it's 0.78679. So 78679. 
And then if I find the difference here, so 1 minus 0 0.786.79. So now if I run this here to say three significant figures, I get 0 0.213. So 0 0.213 there. Okay. And we've done all the hard work now. All we need to do here is consider this value, compare that to our significance level here of 10%. So is our value here greater than or less than the significance level? Well, 0 0.213 is clearly greater than 0 0.1. So 10% as a decimal is 0 0.1. So 0 0.213 is greater than 0 0.1. So therefore, we accept each naught. So if this value here is bigger than our significance level here, so 0 0.213 is greater than 0 0.1, we accept each naught. If this was less than, we would reject each naught. So therefore, accept each naught. So what we'd say here then is there is insufficient evidence at the 10% significance level um, to reject each naught. And in that case, then this disproves the manager's claim. Okay, so accept H naught. Let's just quickly write this down. So insufficient evidence. And this is at the 10% significance level here. At the 10% significance level. to reject H naught. And therefore then, this disproves the manager's claim. So therefore, disproves the manager's claim. And there we have it. So we don't need anything more than that. Just a quick conclusion there just to summarize what we've actually found from our hypothesis test. Now, that's the first method that we can use here to perform the hypothesis test. But the second method then, this is using what we established in the previous video on critical regions and critical values. So let's have a look then at method two here. Like we said then, method two is looking at critical regions. So where do we begin here? Well. Everything up to here is the exact same. So we define our random verbal, formulate our hypotheses here, and then we assume H0 is true. Okay, so we'd have the exact same model here. Like I said, that everything up to this point is the exact same. The only thing that actually changes here is this part here. So we don't find this probability here. What we do is establish the critical region. So what we need then, or what we need to find, is the probability then that our random verbal x is greater than or equal to some value, let's say x, and this is less than the significance level here of 0 0.1. This would give me my critical region here. So, I mean, we've kind of got a little bit of a help here because I can see this probability here um, from the first method. So I know a good starting point here would be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. So let's consider the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. And that here then, well we've already established that, that's 0 0.213. And 0 0.213, again we already established that here, that's greater than 0 0.1. So that doesn't satisfy this condition here that we want, or this inequality here that we want. So now what we need to do here is add one to this value. So it won't be subtract one because if I subtract one here, so for example, probably that x is greater than or equal to four, this value here would get bigger, okay? So in that case then, we're gonna add one to this value. So let's consider the probability that x is greater than or equal to six, like so. So that would be 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, like so. So now, if we evaluate this probability here, so I've just used my calculator to do this already, 
What I get then is 0.0967. I get 0.0967 here, and this value now is less than 0.1. So this is less than 0.1, and in that case, then it satisfies this inequality here. Okay, so now we can deduce the critical region. So therefore, the critical region That would be this here, the inside of this bracket. So x is greater than or equal to 6. So 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. That would be my critical region all the way up to 40 here. So in that case then, we now need to consider what we've observed. So we got x equals 5 here, okay? because we got the evidence as 5. So as 5 does not lie in the critical region, so 5 lies in the acceptance region. That's why we accept h0 here. Okay. So five does not fall in the rejection um, region here, okay, or the critical region, we should say. Um, so for that reason, we accept H0. So let me just quickly summarize that here. As five does not lie in the critical region. we accept H0, okay? And it shouldn't really come as a surprise then that we obviously reach the same conclusion here, okay? We've just got a slightly different method to actually find the evidence here, okay? But obviously the conclusion should be the exact same. Okay, so we accept H0, and again, we'd give a quick conclusion, but it would just be the exact same here. So I'm not gonna bother writing that down again, but you would need a conclusion here as well. And there we have it. So it's up to you usually which method you can use. However, sometimes the question might state that you need to use this method here of critical regions. So do make sure that you're aware of this method too here and that you can do it also using critical regions. But there we have it. So that gives the solution there to that practice question. And that brings us to the end of this video on one-tailed hypothesis tests.